guest is Nan Simonson. She's actually going to interview me in many ways, but we're here together to talk about why we think it's so important to find a lifestyle medicine doctor, especially if you're vegan or plant-based. You know, the number one email we get in request to our website is, where do I find a vegan doctor? Well, we're going to tell you today, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about mine and how I found him, and just about why it's so important that you have a doctor that's preferably certified in lifestyle medicine, but at least one that understands the pillars of lifestyle medicine. Please welcome Nan Simonson. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And I'm so glad to be here. Um, we have people here that may not know your history. And so we'll get to that in just a bit. But I wanted to talk a little bit to them about why we're so thrilled to have you with lifestyle medicine. And um, gosh, your lifetime of accomplishments. And you've got probably another 20 to 40 years to go. So we haven't seen anything yet. But as a chef and an instructor and a speaker and a performer in your past, I saw that um, podcast with you talking about your history in stand-up and improv. And that was kind of fun. I saw you on Johnny Carson upside down playing a harmonica or something. <laughs> you're an amazing woman. Um, but most importantly, now you're writing books. You're an author, you do podcasts, and I'll mention that in just a minute, and the Healthy Living um, Chef AJ show on, um, on Healthy TV. Um, you're just a busy, busy person. Um, but I have a story to tell you before we do anything else. And it's about somebody in our practice and how you've influenced her. And then we'll look at where you came from to get this kind of conviction. Um, of course, I won't name names, but I'm a patient navigator at Lifestyle Medicine for um, the CHIP program, which you're familiar with, AJ. You've interviewed Hans Deal and spoken to him and he is one of the founders of lifestyle medicine and the people who in our practice do the chip program uh, have a patient navigator and that's me and I work much more closely with them and we communicate much more often um, and the first meeting that I had with her she was distraught because she was very unhappy with her weight she felt very uncomfortable moving around. Um, but she also had binge eating disorder. She said, I'm a food addict and I have been since I was 14 years old. And she said, it's awful. I hate myself. And I said, I know exactly how you feel. And she looked at me and said, you couldn't know how I feel. And I said, of course I do. I was 14 when I started this. I was 14 and went through anorexia, anorexia then bulimia, and for most of my life have dealt with um, eating disorders and mainly bulimia. And not until a couple of things happened was I able to stop at the age of, I think, 68. Um, that's a lifetime, and maybe 67. Um, one of them was that I read a book that made all the difference. I don't know if you'd be interested in this, if an interview with her, but it, the book is Brain Over Binge, Catherine Hansen. And she talks about how to simply decide not to respond to urges, that binging has nothing to do with our life history, our past. I'm writing a book about all of that, which now I realize was not the reason for the binging. Um, and to simply turn off your responses to those urges. The other one though, more importantly, was having found whole food plant-based eating um, and then finding lifestyle medicine and then found out they needed a health coach and I was certified and then the rest is history. Um, but my relationship with this patient then was um, honest enough and open enough that she wrote me this. Um, after many failures that she shared with me, she said in the spring, I took Chef AJ's 21 day challenge, but fell off the wagon. I continued to listen to her videos and something finally clicked eight weeks ago. I was feeling so sick, heart palpitations, headaches, difficulty walking. So I took the plunge and began the program again. 
I weighed myself for the first time yesterday um, since I began and I'm down 30 pounds. I have a long way to go, but I already feel so much better. The remedy is listening to any of Chef AJ's presentations. And I had told her about you and Tammy's Nutmeg Notebook as it relates to diet plans on your part and recipes and then Tammy's for recipes as well. Um, the remedy is listening to any of AJ's presentations, which energizes and inspires me. I'm trying her recipes regularly, just made the vegan chicken curry with canned jackfruit that I got from Trader Joe's. It was quite good. And it's been especially helpful to eat potatoes for both lunch and dinner, because I know AJ, potatoes are your favorite food, after generous servings of greens. So you've changed this person. And she is on the road to recovery because what she said later in the text was that now she's not hungry all the time. And that's where whole food, plant-based, starch-based foods made a huge difference to me. And that is that I wasn't hungry anymore. I eat 80% of my calories in starches and massive amounts of greens and vegetables and seeds and legumes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the food is delicious. And you had said something to me when I spoke to you earlier that Doc Ly Dr. Lyle said, who is a evolutionary psychologist for those who don't know and an expert on behavior and recovery. And he said something to you about starches. What was that? Agent? Yeah, well, he said there's no binging. And the only people that binge are people that restrict starch. It's just that, or that have a history of restricting it because that is what they're looking for. Starch is to the hunger drive what oxygen is to breathing. And nobody that doesn't have a history of restriction ever binges. Go to third world countries or places where there's not, uh, not enough food. There's no anorexia. There's no bulimia. There's no eating disorders. It all comes, it starts with restriction. And that restriction is always starch. It's, you know, you get people that eat tons and tons of vegetables and maybe even some fruit, but they're still afraid of the complex carbohydrates. And until they learn to eat starch ad libitum, they're always going to be hungry and they're always going to end up relapsing in my opinion. So yeah. you can't be afraid of starch. It's what they put on the starch they need to be afraid of. And unfortunately, since what, the 60s, but mainly the 70s when Atkins became popular again, we've been, and now ketosis, we're told again and again and again that starches are the things that make us fat. And you could do a deep dive into that. You know the physiology of it. I also wanted to show people or talk to people about your, your books. Unprocessed was where you explain to people your history and your past. And I'm going to ask you about that because you weren't always where you are now. And that has a lot to do with your conviction. Like, well... My mission, I turned 70 in about well, a little less than four months, and my mission is to sing the praises of and help other people understand that disordered eating doesn't have to be a, a, a sentence to fighting food the rest of their lives. And you are on a mission, and that mission started with the changes you made in your diet. So I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind to talk about that, but let me finish about your book. So you have Unprocessed that talks about that part of your history. You have The Secrets of Ultimate Weight Loss that talks about how to fight urges, recover from the food addiction, et cetera. I love this book. I've had it for a couple of years. You can see I've got tabs throughout. I've underlined everywhere. One of the things I wanted to bring up, because I don't think you've ever said this, that books almost always begin with endorsement or praises, if you call it that. And you have between medical doctors and health and wellness experts, health and fitness and wellness experts, you have 41 praises, 41 endorsements in this book from people who put their reputation on the line to the degree that they wrote descriptions about what they got out of this book that they then sell, uh, that they then offer their um, clients or their patients. So good for you. So talk to us about that. And oh, and then I think it's this week or maybe next week, you have another book. Ta-da! I, 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 I should have name, I'll let you say it. Go ahead. It's called, it's called Own Your Health. And I, I, I left it in the other room. I can ask okay. my husband to get it if you want to see it. But first, I've got to tell you, people are saying they can't believe that you are going to be 70 and that you look great and that your skin is great. I had no idea that you were 70. Well, 
People say that to you constantly and whole food plant-based makes the difference. I had all kinds of health markers that were going, I was going to say in the toilet. Well, I just did say that, didn't I? Anyway, that were going downstream um, before I changed to a whole food plant-based diet and everything has changed. I mean, everything, including my skin and, and even though I was not overweight, I'm 5'2", and I think I may have been 120, 119. Um, well, right now I'm 110 because I just did a water fast, but you know, 115 is okay. Um, so it's not about the weight, it's about the health, it's about longevity. When I turn 70, my goal is to go another 20 to 30 years. That's the plan, spending that nudging people into the same direction. Uh, but so thank you for saying that. So tell us about Tell us about your, your um, journey. Well, it's starting at what point? <laughs> um, just bits of what you talked about in Unprocessed because people, Chef AJ just celebrated her 43rd anniversary in September as a vegan. Yep. But as she says in Unprocessed, she was a junk food vegan. So yep. being a vegan doesn't say anything. Whole food plant-based doesn't say anything if that whole food is loaded with all kinds of things that you um, overeat and oils and salt and sugar, well, all those aren't whole food. So that kind of eliminates that. AJ likes to call it whole food exclusive. Yeah, plant exclusive. Right, because, you know, I think uh, Dr. McDougall would, would have called me a fat vegan back then. That's, he had a whole lecture about that. And that's what I was. And I was, I was doing it for the animals. So I had no interest in my health. And I didn't know anything about the environment in 1977. That wasn't even a discussion then, you know. But it was solely for the animals, which is a great reason. I think the, most, the primary reason that most people adopt a plant-based or a vegan diet. And at the age of 40, 43 after being vegan for 26 years and being almost 200 pounds and I'm I'm 55 five, five, between 55 five and 56 I developed precancerous polyps in my colon and I was bleeding and you know that's not that you would think that being a vegan would have protected me against that, but I was, I was, I wasn't eating any fruits and vegetables. And so I had to really look seriously at my diet. And I went to a place called the Optimum Health Institute. They, True North was in existence back then, but I did not know about it. And I don't think the internet was quite there yet where I could research these things. And, you know, no one had ever said anything about diet. And that's why one of the reasons I call this why you need to find a lifestyle medicine doctor, because I really believe that the most important question any doctor can ask his patient is the one that no doctor, unless they're a lifestyle medicine doctor asks, which is, what are you eating? And up until I got a lifestyle medicine doctor, that never even came up in any kind of appointment in my life. And I remember in my 20s saying to the, the man who was my doctor then saying, you know, I think I have a, a food addiction or sugar addiction. I can't think, oh, no, it's impossible. It's impossible, you know. And uh, so, uh, you know, eating no fruits and vegetables is a, is a recipe for disaster, regardless of what kind of diet you're on, because those are the healthiest foods you can eat. They're full of fiber and nutrients, and, and most Americans eat very few of them. So 43 years took its toll eating mostly sugar and flour and oil, you know, I was basically, I basically ate dessert for 43 years, you know, because I really didn't eat very many animal products, even when I did quote eat them because I didn't like them. And I still, you know, I, that's why I don't understand this beyond meat and impossible burger. I didn't like meat when I ate meat. So why would I want to replicate meat in a, in, in just as an unhealthy form, you know, or almost as unhealthy form, you know? And so when I went to the Afternoon Health Institute, they explained that all diseases, occur because the body's in a state of inflammation. And that can be caused not just by animal products, all those animal products do cause it, but by all the crap I was eating, sugar and oil and caffeine and flour and, uh, you know, Coke Slurpees, Dr. Peppers, those kind of things. And, you know, when I think back, I was probably a thousand of the calories a day that I was consuming were liquid calories from, from either uh, Coke Slurpees or Dr. Pepper. And so, you know, just removing those two things was a huge benefit to me. And so I, actually healed the polyps in my colon without surgery because I was too afraid to have surgery. They couldn't remove them in the in the routine colonoscopy because my colon was just, as I said, too dirty. So that's when I really learned that that, that food is food is medicine. That's amazing. And then you began understanding a little bit more about, well, actually, not only about what food could do for you, um, as it related to weight loss, but you were also inspired by another person um, 
who said something to you, which I just love, and, and go ahead and quote that, uh, Dr. Goldhammer, about your, um, the possibilities, or maybe it was Dr. Lyle. Well, you know, the, the three, the three, I mean, I, I love all the plant-based doctors, but the three that really helped me so much with this problem was, were, you know, they all were in Santa Rosa at the time, Dr. McDougal, Dr. Goldhammer, and Dr. Lyle. And, you know, Dr. Lyle did a bet with me that, because I said, you know, your diet's stupid. I can't lose weight, you know, eating potatoes, you know, and eating all I want and not, you know, not restricting. And he said, well, you know, we're just going to run an experiment for 30 days. And, you know, we're going to see that's his little trick to get you in. and I'm like yeah yeah I'm going to do it 90 days and, I'll, and of course it works it never hasn't worked you know a, a low fat whole food starch center diet has never not worked and it, and it did work and he so he kind of tricked me and uh, you know you know and it was all reinforced by everything Dr. McDougall had been teaching for 40 years and Dr. Goldhammer really was like I don't know exactly how he got inside my head but he kind of said he, he came to my house when I lived in Sherman Oaks and took my class and that's when he hired me to start doing a, a special program there that I did for almost 10 years called the holiday extravaganza. And he said something like, you know, instead of saying, Hey, you're fat, you should lose weight. He said something like, you know, you're, 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 you're just a great chef. And, you know, uh, you know, and just imagine like if you were a skinny bitch or he, he just, he said it in such a way that it may, it seemed, first of all, it seemed possible because he taught me how to do it. He basically taught me calorie density because that's one of the things that both he and Dr. Lyle lecture on at True North, but he just made it sound just like, so like this was going to be a great thing. And he was right. And I really owe him a huge debt in, in Dr. Lyle. They're just, they're, they're awesome. That's why I, I was the voice actor on the pleasure trap and I didn't even charge them because I was just wanting to pay them back for helping me so much. Mm. Pretty impressive. Um, speaking of impressive, I wrote on our description of you and our invitation to this talk uh, to our patients um, that you were one of the nicest people on the planet. And <laughs> oh I no, not really. <laughs> not really, but thank you. I mean, I, I think I'm I, I mean, I'm a kind person, but you know, you push me and, and you'll see a different side of me, honestly. Like if somebody's hurting a dog, for example, or a kid, you'll see, you'll see the, the B word come out, you know, yeah. but I think I'm a good person, but I'm not always that nice. I mean, but, 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 but it's not that I mean, it's just that what people don't like about me is that I think I tell the truth. I mean, I know we can get slammed for this because a lot of people don't believe in astrology because it's like the devil's work, but I'm a double Aries. And, and I I just say, I just, I say the truth and I don't always sugarcoat it. And so a lot of people don't like that, you know? Well, the way you interview and your honesty and your um, enthusiasm for other people's ventures, as well as their um, their, their beliefs and you accept, I mean, I've heard people say things that you're not crazy about and you just say, Oh, okay. That was interesting. And keep going right yeah. on. I, I don't want to be a mean interviewer because I know what it's like to be on the end of it. And I, I try really carefully to screen my guests and not have anybody on the show that I wouldn't want to be friends with or have over for dinner. But sometimes people that say things you don't expect sneak through. And then I feel if that's really the case, I can always edit it. But yeah, I don't, I, I mean, unless somebody was rude to me, I would, I don't want to be, I want people to feel really comfortable being on my show. And that's why I think I'm able to attract such good guests because they see that I'm not, that even when I don't agree with them, I mean, you might see my eyes go like this, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to slam them, you know, cause that's rude. That's really rude. I think. And embarrassing. And it, and it says more about me than them. So I, yeah, I like people to be able to speak their truth. And if it doesn't intersect with mine, well, that's, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> My translation of nicest people had to do with your sacrifice and your sacrifice, I think, was that on March 20th, you began, and this was at the beginning of, um, of COVID-19, of our being shut in, um, and people were just, they didn't know what to do. And a lot of businesses were shuttering. <laughs> businesses were, that's my husband. That's they, okay, he can be on. <laughs> that's the husband wave. Yeah, go, yeah. Away, go away, go um, away. Yeah, right. My, um, anyway, businesses were shuttering and you, without a hesitation, decided that that day you were going to bring people all the good information about health, about mindfulness, about um, um, good food. Uh, you began every day podcasting, doing a podcast, interviewing one to three people a day. I was exhausted just thinking about what you did. And I think you might be doing one or two now rather than up to three, but you're still doing it. 
and I have I've listened to most likely at least 50 of them, learned so much. But as as my patient said, um, you've made all the difference because all you have to do is watch for a Chef AJ interview and you can bring yourself up and feel the that, that kind of conviction that you have in the way you work. So I want to ask you something. The reason you're here tonight, and I'm here tonight, and I'm so pleased we're here together, uh, is based on an interview you had with Dr. Sell. They call him Dr. Sell. His last name is La Cognina. He's a good Italian, as I am. Um, we're both Italian. Um, anyway, during that, that interview, and he's a lifestyle medical doctor, but you said I was on my bike on what we call the river bottom path and just riding and riding and had set in listening to your interview. And you said, um, when I was in LA, I was looking for a lifestyle medical doctor too far. Um, but now that I'm closer, I found somebody and I thought, hmm. And then you said, I've got a lifestyle medical doctor now and his name is Dr. Dysinger and I almost went off the road. I was so thrilled. Um, tell us about that. Tell us about how you, how you came to even acknowledge the value of lifestyle medicine, what that means to you and how you met or how you knew of Dr. Dysinger. Yeah, that is so, yeah. And, and by the way, guys, you, he'll be your doctor. He can do telemedicine in any state in the United States. And, and even if somebody didn't want to go to Di Dr. Dysinger, I want to talk about why it's really important to get a lifestyle medicine doctor. And there's so many opportunities now for people both internationally and in the United States. I had met Dr. Dysinger years ago. I believe he ran the lifestyle medicine program at Loma Linda. And he had actually showed up with his wife, Heather, at my house many years ago and took my class. And he's just, you know, he's a great guy. He's real tall and handsome and just nice. And is a good, yeah, just somebody, I just always liked him. But Loma Linda was in, is to too far from LA, you know, it's uh on a good day, it's like 90 minutes, two hours. And so, you know, I always thought, God, it wouldn't it be great to have a doctor like him. And um, so I moved to the desert almost two years ago, and I had such a hard time finding doctors because they they do these things where like they're a doctor for one to three years and then they go somewhere else. And so it, it's it's just the way it works with the with the residency program here. And it, a lot of times you can't get in, and a lot of times they're very young. And not that there's anything wrong with being young, but it's just I, I just like my doctor to be like a little bit older. No, I don't know. That's just something that makes me feel more comfortable. So I finally found a really good doctor here and she got married and moved to LA. And then I just, I'm like, this is crazy. I've got to get, you know, I, I got to bite the bullet. And, and the thing is, is a lot of lifestyle medicine doctors like Dr. Dysinger's practice, they take insurance. So a lot of people don't want to pay out of pocket, but I'm telling you, it's, you know, you can either pay them or, or pay or pay it's just so worth it to see a lifestyle medicine doctor. And so many of them, you know, do the telemedicines less than a hundred dollars. You don't necessarily have to go forever, but anyway, so I, this is the funniest thing. This is okay. So this is so funny. I didn't know that Dr. Dysinger had his own practice and he, you know, that he went out and uh, this is why I love, I, I mean, I always look for the bright spots in COVID because I look for the, the gifts. And so I'm not here to argue whether or not masks are effective. It's the law. And I choose to obey the law. I wear a mask. But if I'm going to wear a mask, I'm going to wear an attractive mask. And so I had masks made that said vegan since 1977. And I got to tell you, I have met more people since wearing a mask than I ever would have worn without wearing a mask because people like the mask. They always come up to me now and say, hey, I was thinking about going vegan. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I have a sister-in-law that's vegan. And it just has created so many conversations. So a couple of months ago, I, I knew my doctor was leaving and I, and it took, I, I couldn't find another one. That, I mean, the, the one, she couldn't see me till January. And I'm like, what if I get sick, you know? So I'm in the parking lot of Trader Joe's and this lady who, she's in her 70s, comes up to me and she goes, because I know that because she told me she was in her 70s. She goes, oh, are you vegan? I'm like, yeah. And, and we're starting to talk. And, and I said, where do you live? And she lived around me. I said, well, do, do, you, do you have a good doctor? And she goes, I go to Wayne Dysinger. And I'm like, Wayne Dysinger. He goes, yeah, he's got an office like, you know, about 35 minutes from here. And I'm like, you're kidding. So the first thing I did was I went online. I made an appointment for me and my husband. We are both patients now. And I got to tell you, it is like, it is like concierge medicine without concierge prices. I mean, he's, why isn't he on the show? Well, he's busy right now, but he's coming on the show, believe it or not, not until December 30th. 
but it's just it's such an amazing experience because I've never gone to a doctor before that actually talked to me like for 45 minutes. You know, it's it's not like it's it's just it blows your mind. And you know, now we can do telemedicine now that he he knows us. But I mean, my husband loved him too. He's 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 a, it's like. And, and, and then the stuff that he did, like, you know, like the, the tests that he knew to order, not that regular, it's not that I'm not bashing regular doctors, but if they're not lifestyle medicine doctors, they're not necessarily the, the best for people that are following a vegan diet because they know what to look for and the kind of questions he asked. And so, so for example, you know, like the, the pillars of lifestyle medicine, sleep, diet, exercise, connectivity, like you take these little tests and things and, and all the stuff he offers in his practice, like, first of all, like his cell phone number, and you can text them and all the stuff that you do, like you, I, 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 well, I logged on last week, you were teaching an amazing cooking class. And I get these emails, like tomorrow, there's another seminar. And it, this is all like, like, is just this what you get? It's it's like mind blowing, and I just you know the only thing I can say is I wish I had done this sooner. It's it's so different to also a lot of people you know they they'll ask these questions to the doctors because their doctors will say things about their blood tests, but not realizing that the way the blood tests are interpreted are for like the people that are eat on statins and sitting on the couch and eating animal products so that your blood test can be perfectly, not only normal, but stellar, but because they're comparing you to another population, it, it, Dr. Clapper actually did a video about this. So I, I'm here to ask people if they need a doctor, if you, I mean, if you have nothing wrong with you, then fine. You can, you know, just whatever, but just, just do it. If it's not Dr. Dicing or do one of the other ones that I've interviewed, there's telemedicine, Lori Marbus, she'll be on the show again. There's Barnard Medical Center. There's uh, Institute of Plant-Based Medicine. We had Dr. Mendez on yesterday. All the true North doctors have been doing it for years. Get the, a lifestyle medicine doctor. It's, it's the greatest thing in the world. Let me tell you. Thank you. Well, one of the big differences is that in most medical models, and this is the, how, what happened with me and what frustrated me so much. You see the doctor, they have a short window of time. What their plan is, is to get you well with medicine. And it's not well, it's just functioning with medicine. Uh, my cholesterol was high. They said, we're gonna give you a statin. No, you're not. My, I had rheumatoid arthritis. We're gonna send you to a rheumatologist and they'll give you anti-inflammatory and immune suppressants. No, you're not. You've got something going on with your gallbladder. Let's take it out. They actually made an appointment to rip my gallbladder out. I said, no, you're not. I mean, it went on and on. It was, everything was a technicality, meaning we'll do a surgery or a medication. Nobody said, let's talk about how you're living. They don't have the time for that. The whole point of lifestyle medicine is that what you're there to do is get off medicine. What you're there to do is through lifestyle. We have a pillar of lifestyle medicine. What they're there to do is start with looking at your lifestyle, those four pillars, what you're putting in your body. And that is even goes beyond food. What you're putting on your body absorbs into your bloodstream even faster than what you put in your mouth. So we look at and we talk about the value of looking at what you're buying that you put on your body, what you're cleaning your house with that has chemicals in it, um, what you're drinking. Um, so nourishment is what we call it. Food is what we can translate it as, but that's only part of it. But equally as important, and most people don't even think of it this way, is something that seems on total ends of the spectrum is community. Community is connectedness, connectedness. And if you read Chef AJ's um, uh, Secrets of Ultimate Weight Loss, she has the seven C's of success. Well, one of them is community. Community is you're connecting with other people. People live longer, do better if they're connected to other people. But in that community or that connectedness realm, we're also looking at purpose. We're going to live longer simply because we want to. Those people in the blue zones who live into the hundreds have purpose. They have a reason to be alive and they focus on that every day. They're busy, they're engaged, people care about them, they care about other people. And then we have resilience. Now that's sleep, but it goes beyond sleep. I was with a group today because we have groups almost every day 
that are either talking groups or nourishment groups or resilience groups to help people apply this uh, with the application. And in resilience, we're not just talking about sleep. And we talk a lot about sleep because a lot of people don't think it matters and it matters clinically. It matters as much as your food, even though I don't think anything matters as much as what you put in your body that becomes part of your cells. But whatever affects your mind is going to affect your autonomic nervous system, which is your parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves, which either sends you in fight or flight, totally messes up your adrenals if you're like that all the time, or your um, rest and digest, which allows you to calm down enough to let your mind work well, your adrenals, your thyroid, your pancreas, your, your digestion, all of those are part of lifestyle medicine, but nobody talks about that. As a matter of fact, one of the most prescribed drugs is a proton pump inhibitor. If you burp too much, instead of looking at the food, they put something in your stomach that stops the acid. That's crazy. And yet it's done habitually. So that's part of lifestyle medicine. And then, of course, movement. We call it movement, even though, of course, it's exercise, but it's movement in every way we move. I happen to know that Chef AJ is a mover. You want to tell him about your movement? She oh. rolls out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the secret. You put your spin bike right next to your bed so that you almost have no choice. I didn't exercise till I was 52 and I'm 60 now. So don't worry, guys, if you haven't exercised, it's never too late to, to and again, Dr. Lyle once again tricked me or he got me to exercise by basically saying that it was my psychiatric medicine because I was on psychiatric medicine and I got off of it thanks to Dr. Lyle. And he said, now you need to replace it. And so when he framed it that way, that I wasn't exercising to lose weight or as a punishment, but that it was my medication. So I do it almost every morning for an hour. I, I'm in physical therapy now for this torn rotator cuff. Some days I miss because of an early appointment. Then I, I just, I never feel good, but it's just, it, I love that time because I, I it's, it's kind of like my fun time because that's when I do whatever I want. I might be playing words with friends on the bike or watching a juicy show on Netflix. So I, I, I linked other pleasurable experiences to something that isn't, is less pleasurable. And it's like, when I'm done, it's like, I don't even remember that I exercised for an hour other than I'm dripping wet. And, you know, again, another Loma Linda doctor that shares eyes, they were talking about how I had interviewed them that the leg muscles, but that all exercise is good, but that you really have to, you have to sweat, you know, taking a stroll is not enough for longevity and preventing Alzheimer's. You've got to really break a sweat, which spinning does, but they've said the leg muscles, especially are correlated with brain health. And, and so people think I'm so skinny. You should see me from the bottom down. My legs are huge. I mean, seriously, like they're, they're like, uh, I'll see if I can lift it up to show you. I mean, they're, they're, they're bigger than my husband's just, just from spinning. So yeah, just find something that either you like, or that you love, or that at least you don't hate. Yoga is another thing I like, but yeah, I, you know, it is, it's everything you it, the food is not enough, you know, and exercise isn't enough. And food and exercise isn't enough. You need, the, you know, there's, like you say, the four pillars, diet, sleep, exercise, community. And that's really what the blue zones are about too. I mean, they, they had all of them. They didn't just pick the ones that they liked. So Chef AG, you have a schedule that I find daunting. You do the ultimate weight loss, weight loss class. You have your 21 day recovery program. You're always connecting with people, speaking of connection, how do you and what do you do to stay calm and, and keep your, I'll call it resilience up? Uh, self-care. So I, you know, I, I, like I say, I, 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 you know, they say you can't give from an empty cup. So I just make sure that the things that I need to do for my mental health are done before I, I do anything else. And that's why exercise in the morning is so important, you know, because if I don't do it, I, I, I just, yeah. So I so, you know, I, and I always make sure, well, not it's harder now with COVID to do things that I used to love to do for self-care, manicures, pedicures, haven't had one of those since March 6th. I remember, I mean, I'd kill for a manicure, you know, but those kind of things, massages, you know, the, I don't think of it as selfish, you know, and I, t and also I'm, I mean, not everybody can do this. I understand, but uh, because I'm self-employed, I pace myself, I work a lot, but if I feel like I need to like do, you know, I don't really take a nap, but I'll go do a yoga stretch for like 20 minutes. And so, you know, I, I really monitor my stress and I really have to keep it, you know, got to keep calm. Basically, that's my job is to keep calm. And, and you know that. And so you do it. So yeah, you're already ahead of the game in that way. Yeah. 
it's, it's a lot easier to stay calm than to try to get calm once you're upset. So I try to avoid people's people, places and things that, that, that could trigger my anxiety because I still have terrible anxiety. I've just learned to manage it through working with Dr. Lyle and things like that. And so one of the things, you know, this, this obviously COVID is, is not a good thing, but for me, what has been a gift in it is that I really realized how much I do like to be at home after traveling for over 10 years. And I really don't like getting on a plane, even when there's no COVID or going to the airport and those things really, really stress me out. And so uh, it's been nice to to have something else to do that that is meaningful where and actually the truth is I'm re reaching, you know, so I go to a conference and they're great and I'm I'm reaching 200 people. But with this show, I'm reaching, you know, sometimes up to a thousand people a day are watching and even more who knows in the replay. So so I, I kind of like this. And and what I really want to do and thank you for acknowledging me for the show, because one of the things I try to do, listen, I love interviewing the superstars like, you know, the Dr. Gregors and the Dr. McDougal's Dr. Furman. I love that. And Dr. Barnard. But what I really try to do is I want to give a platform to people that maybe don't have a big following or people haven't heard about. So because I want to pass, I, you know, I'm hoping to retire one day and just kind of like sit around. Not, I won't sit around, but, you know, and I want I want somebody's got to carry the torch. And that's why, you know, I want I want Wayne Dysinger to be like up there with all the others like because he, he he i mean he should be because he's he's that good and i i can't wait for him to come on the show so people can see him and and he's like you know a, a lot of the plant-based doctors they're wonderful but they're not treating patients you can't be their patient but the fact that you can like still get him like you know that's amazing and i'm hoping he really will branch out like he said maybe and and, and, and there's a few doctors here that are not working in lifestyle medicine. They're doing the daily grind. And, and that would be amazing, you know, to have an office a little bit closer. Well, he's 35 miles high, 35,000 miles high right now. He's, he's heading for a holiday with his, he, he works so hard. He travels internationally and speaks, but he's with his family on a holiday. They're flying right now to um, Yellowstone. So they're going to be breathing fresh air. And that's another part of the, one of the pillars of lifestyle medicine as it relates to that's under the, the pillar of, of movement. And when we move, moving outside, breathing fresh air, um, um, being in uh, near trees and, and um, natural environments make a huge difference as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to show was this, the pleasure trap, because you uh, spoke of that, AJ. Would you tell them what you mean by uh, what this means to you, what this book represents? Uh, absolutely. In a nutshell, the pleasure trap is the idea that we prefer apple pie to an apple and carrot cake to a carrot. And I love these two doctors who wrote this book because it's basically why so many, not, I wouldn't say why so many, why everybody struggles with their weight or a lifestyle disease, because they were designed, all of us humans were designed for an environment of scarcity, like our ancestors. And now we live in a very unnatural environment. It's basically like we're all living in a 7-Eleven, either by, because our houses have all this crap in them, or everywhere you go from the pet store, you can't get away from the crap in the world. And so since we're hardwired to always prefer the most concentrated source of calories in any environment, that's all there is, is an abundance of calories now our ancestors didn't have enough calories to survive and now we've got too many so we're overfed we're undernourished the obesity rates are higher than ever and it's because of this phenomenon called the pleasure trap that most people are stuck in and it's very difficult once you're in it to crawl your way out of it and you know it's funny that you mentioned dr sal because i'm going to be on his show a week from Wednesday. And what he wants to talk about is why SOS. And, and not everybody has to be SOS free, but people that are food addicts that have struggled with their weight, I got to say, it's the best way to be. It's, a, it's certainly the quickest way out of the pleasure trap. It's just not going to be feasible or sustainable for everybody. But the pleasure trap is, is a wonderful book. And I think the fact that it's on audio now, it's going to make it easier. And I'm not just saying that because I narrated it. I, get, I don't get anything if you if you read the pleasure trap, but it, it is, it's 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 a great book. And, and if you don't want, want to read the pleasure trap, just listen to any of the interviews on YouTube with Dr. Lyle or Dr. Goldhammer on the pleasure trap. It's, uh, oh, uh, somebody found the pleasure trap boring. Well, it's all right. Different well, strokes for different folks. It wasn't supposed to be a novel or a mystery or anything exciting. It's science. It's just science by some brilliant scientists, i.e. doctors. Um, you've interviewed both Dr. Lyle and Dr. Hawk. As a matter of fact, I had a phone call with her because there was a point, 
for five years after the death of my husband 10 years ago, after 40 years of marriage, that for some reason, the eating disorder just disappeared for five years. And I didn't know why. And I knew I was going to talk about it in my book. And I, I asked her, she and Dr. L uh, uh, Lyle are both in, um, I want to call it environmental psychologist, evolutionary psychologist. In other words, how we've evolved to think and actually react the way we react through time. Uh, and I asked her, I wanted to ask her why, what her take on that was. And it was really, really interesting. And a lot of that, when she speaks, is very, you can call it cut and dry. So I respect anyone's opinion in that way. But you can look at it differently and that it's simply factual. And if it applies, then it's very interesting. If it doesn't apply at all, or it's not something that you want to exercise, then it's, of course, it's not a, a you know, enjoyable read. But your podcast with both of them, Dr. Lyle by himself, which you've done maybe a half a dozen times, the two of them together was really interesting, which was just a couple of days ago. So thank you for that. Tell them about, tell us about the food you eat, because to my husband, Tim, put your head out and say hi to people. <laughs> I did find another husband. Oh, nice. <laughs> it looked like I went out trolling. No, about a year and a half, almost two years in, I realized I loved having a partner. And so <laughs> I found another one. <laughs> but in any case, um, why did I tell you that? I don't know. Oh, uh, my husband and I, uh, all the time because we're both whole food plant-based have been for almost two years now and we eat no animal product at all and we love our food <laughs> we'll be eating these enormous meals and great food and diversity and we'll say to each other if we were eating animals right now we'd have something's muscle sitting on my plate, <laughs> a little bit of something maybe green, a little bit of something maybe starchy, and that would be our meal. And we, we were crazy about the food. So tell them about the food because I do believe, and I said this to somebody, I think in one of the groups that I was doing, that if, if they knew, they'd have to trust us at first because if you eat a lot of, of um, processed food, the flavors oh sos you're going to have to tell them what sos is because a, a number of people don't know what that is but it, it, it i'll let her tell you but if you're eating foods with the intensity of what the food manufacturers do do you know they put they do mris of people to find that perfect spot of pleasure the high when they're making food processed with all kinds of chemicals and all kinds of fake stuff that our body doesn't even know what to do with to find that spot they sell you that food so that you can't not eat it and that's part of what the pleasure trap is explaining to you but you break that cycle by changing your taste buds and trusting that you will there was a time that i thought back and thought oh i used to love my whatever and I've had it for so long, I don't want any of those whatevers. And it's really true. So would you talk about that, Chef AJ? Yeah. SOS, a lot of people say I'm on the SOS diet, but they, I think they mean to say they're on the SOS free diet. And I don't know who coined the term, but I know Dr. Goldhammer uses it a lot. SOS, he says, is the international symbol of distress, but it's also sugar, oil, and salt. And so what Dr. Goldhammer says is that sugar, oil, and salt are not foods. They're chemicals that are added to the food that fool our brain satiety mechanism, which causes us to overeat and get, in some cases, fat and sick. And so, like you mentioned, the processed food industry puts more sugar, fat, and salt in food than anybody ever would at home, restaurants too. And that's why we like it so much. The thing is, is once we adapt to that high level of sugar, fat, and salt, it's very hard to eat food without it. And, and that's when people say, oh, the food is boring, it's restrictive, it doesn't taste good. But the truth is, is if you do a water fast, or if you just, you know, stop, you know, using those chemicals, eventually you will learn to like, not just like, but love the taste of whole natural food. As Dr. Lyle says, we're designed to like the taste and love the taste of whole natural food. But while, it, you know, it's hard to live in both worlds. It's hard to like, you know, go out to restaurants all the time and then hope that your sweet potatoes and broccoli taste good at home. So 
Yeah, it's it's not for everybody, but I'll tell you the people that managed to do it. And there've been so many people now, you know, that have gone through my program, like you mentioned, Tammy Kramer of Nutmeg Notebook and Shada Soleimani of Healthy Cooking with Shada. And they're becoming educators at, with, with YouTube channels and cooking classes. And they were trained by me to eat this way. And, and now all the recipes reflect that faith from get to the root. And, and these people are making incredible recipes, and incredible food, not to mention losing anywhere from, you know, 50 to over a hundred pounds and keeping it off now. So it, it is a very good strategy for people that are struggling with a lifestyle disease or extra weight. But again, it is more, uh, more difficult than, than to, to include those things, but you will, your taste will adapt, but it does take time. It could take three days. It could take three months. Everybody is different, but I'll tell you, we, you know, people think like, you know, I remember having Dr. Furman over for dinner once and he basically eats the same way as me. It's more high fat nuts and things like that, but he, he, he's never been overweight or a food addict. He loves his food. He, we do this because we love our food. Do you think if it wasn't, if it wasn't delicious, we could have sustained it? Of course not. So, you know, I, I think you should love the food that loves you back. And, uh, you know, think about that with what you're eating. I see a question here. Do I eat a lot of fruit? I mean, I don't not eat a lot of fruit. I, I would say I eat about three pounds of starch a day, two pounds of vegetables and a pound of fruit. I don't measure, but, um, you know, I mean, I actually had some jackfruit earlier. That's really good. Have you ever had fresh jackfruit? Do you buy it by the, I, I go to a guy in Riverside that has this wonderful shop called Fruit Man and they have these 20 pound boxes and in the box is a big jackfruit. And I said to him, I can't, you got to cut it up. He said, first of all, when it's right, it's fabulous. When it's green, you use it for cooking. When it's right, it's so sweet. It's so wonderful. It has kind of an off smell. And so you have to get past the off smell and, and enjoy the, the sweetness of it. Um, but how do you get your jackfruit? So um, when I was in LA, I would buy it fresh at this little store, mom and pop store called Farm Boy. Here, what I just do is I buy the organic frozen and then oh, it, it, okay. it just, you know, I let it defrost a little. It tastes like juicy fruit gum, but you're right. The smell, it kind of smells like poop, but it tastes amazing. You know, if you can get past the smell. <laughs> That's great. When you say eat this way, in a nutshell, can you, uh, I don't know that you can do that in this amount of time that we have left. But talk to them about what you mean by this way, because actually the pillar, the nourishment pillar of lifestyle medicine is based on whole food, plant-based. We don't dictate it to patients, but we encourage them. We use Dr. Um, Gregor's, um, um, uh, what is it called? I, I want to daily say, dozen. It may be the daily dozen. Yeah, daily. I was going to say dirty dozen, but that's <laughs> no. We don't want to be. That's the one thing we don't want to be eating the dirty dozen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Dr. Gregor's um, uh, healthy dozen. Um, say it again. Daily dozen. Daily dozen. Um, as it breaks down those whole foods into categories of berries and and citrus, et cetera, et cetera. But um, tell them if you wouldn't mind what you mean by eating like this? What, what does it look like to eat like Chef AJ? Because that was referred to by this patient when she said, oh, I just love eating potatoes and a, a, a you know, a myriad of greens. She used another word, uh, oh, generous servings of greens. Um, tell them what you're meaning. Yeah. Well, well, so so that don't. The, the, so basically the way I eat and recommend others eat, especially if they're struggling with weight, but even if they're not, they can, you know, if they're not struggling with weight, then just eat more, more high fat foods like nuts, seeds, and avocados is all you want of foods, which I call here, let me get my book just to show you the back to the left of the red line. Let's see if you can see that. So basically that's fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, food of a caloric density of 600 calories per pound or less. You do that, you can eat all you want, as often as you want, whenever you want, until comfortably full. It doesn't matter when you eat, why you eat, or how much you eat. Now, if you're struggling with weight or food addictions, we got to kind of watch those high fat plant foods and maybe limit them to like an ounce of nuts a day or a fifth of an avocado, you know, or a couple of tablespoons of seeds, because those can be problematic for people, both in terms of caloric density and they often can be a trigger food but you don't, you don't skimp on the starches. You eat lots of vegetables because they're good for you, but also because greens contain a compound called phylicoids, which basically kill your hunger, shut off the hunger switch, fight cravings for crap food like sugar. And the idea is you eat tons of vegetables and starches and fruit for dessert, but 
when I say tons of vegetables, I mean about two pounds a day, a pound raw, a pound cooked. You can eat more than that, but that's the minimum. And it, you want to get most of your volume from fruits and vegetables, but you want most of your calories from starch. And how much starch to vegetables people are going to eat, it's going to depend on their energy needs and all kinds of things. You know, some people might be able to get away with 50-50. I eat about, I would say, 66% of my calories from starch and the other, whatever math is from fruits and vegetables. So yeah, and, 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 and preferably without the chemicals like sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt. And you do that and lose weight, feel great. And you know, it's interesting because people that are from the NHA, the National Hygiene Association, where a lot of the doctors came out of like Dr. Frank Sabatino and Dr. Stefan Esser, they eat, they've never been overweight. They still eat this way. And it's just, it's just a very healthy way to eat. And it's delicious. It's satisfying. It's not going to necessarily make you popular because you're not going to be able to really get anything in a restaurant without sugar, fat, and salt. But you know, I tell people try it for 21 days. That's why I do the 21 day program because if we do it like Dr. Lyle, trick me. We're doing an experiment. We're not going to say, I'm never going to have this again. We're going to say, look, look, Lent's 42 days, right? Or 40 days. You could do anything for a couple of weeks. So we're just going to try this and see. And for some people, it's extremely difficult. And some people, it's a lot easier than they think. But if you can get past that hump of the detox, which you know that if you have symptoms when you stop eating what you're eating, just like when you stop drinking coffee, you get a headache, you know, then, then what you're eating is addictive. So there's, there's a period of discomfort, but if you can get past that, man, it, it's like everything tastes good. It's like, you know, I don't know. It's like everything I eat. It's like, I say it every day I say it like my husband, and I say to him, like, Oh my God, this food is so good. It is. And it's in by a lot of people's standards to be simple and boring, but to us, it tastes amazing. Right after this broadcast, I know what I'm going to have for dinner. I always decide what I'm going to have for dinner at lunch. You know, it just makes it easier. And I always make my bean burgers. I make them um, without beans for me, but and they always keep them in the freezer. So I'm going to have these burgers, they're not, not meat burgers, but they're vegetable burgers in, in lettuce buns. And I'm going to have some homemade pico de gallo on it. And I got corn that I steamed in the instant pot. And then my dessert, I made these little thing called cram muffins. They're like carrot cake. I mean, I eat great. And you know, when I've had people here before the pandemic, I was doing a business class and I had these four people here for a week. They, they didn't sleep with me, but they were here like from like, you know, 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. And I was, I, they, they ate like I did. And they're like, oh, I can't eat that. It's too much. It's too many calories. Oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. And I would just eat it. Just eat it. And they all went home and lost weight. And they were all different weights. One was a little overweight. One was already thin. The two were in, I mean, it, every single person that stayed with me for that week lost weight, eating more food than you can absolutely imagine. So if you actually like eating large volumes of food, this is really the way to do it. You know, some people can't, maybe they've had gastric bypass, but I mean, this this is so great. And you end up looking like you at 60 with that gorgeous skin. You have no makeup on. I, I love the way you glow. Um, but one of the things that some people think when they hear vegetables and they hear potatoes and things, they sort of picture what we do when we're on these. If we've grown, if we've been around long enough, we think carbs are bad. We also think if we're doing vegetables, then we've had, we have these restrictive diets where everything is just steamed and plain and boring. That's the whole reason to take advantage of these free training um, podcasts that, that um, Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook offers, what AJ offers. Every day, she, you could go on her website and learn a new recipe. And you get to the point where you say, okay, just let me, oh, batch cooking. Just a quickie on batch cooking because that's the other thing. I just did a class on putting together bowls and I simply pulled out of my refrigerator all this batch cook, um, the, the potatoes, the the quinoa, the beans, the black rice, the da da da. And, and that's what people have to also trust that if you have the recipes or forget the recipes, if you just finally get used to this enough to put together, to pull together a bunch of great ingredients and maybe a couple of sauces that are fat free, that are not animal product, no oil, no egg, no um, dairy, 
you'll learn to do that and you will be crazy about what you eat. Tell them what I mean by batch cooking and then I'm going to let you go and eat that meal. Yeah. But I'll, I'll just end by talking, yeah. saying another word about Dr. Dysinger. Right. Well, but batch cooking the way Tammy Kramer does it, she's the she really is the boss. So for me, it's more simple. And, and because I work at home, I'm self-employed. I don't have to like pick a day. And I just when one thing is out, I make another. So in other words, I always cook at least at least six pounds, if not more of potatoes or sweet potatoes at a time. I cook them in my oven. I, I make them in the Breville, that, but I'm roasting them. And so then I have them and I wait until, I don't wait until they're gone to make the next batch. The day that I know I'm going to have the last serving, another one's going in. And so we do the same thing with whatever we cook, whether it's whole grains or beans, you eat some, you freeze some, you refrigerate some. And so like you, I can always, there's always food to make a meal. So there's always chopped salad. There's always rice that's been frozen and some frozen vegetables. And like you say, it, you know, really it's the sauce. The sauce makes the meal. And, you know, now with all the wonderful sauces from Dylan from Well Your World, he's got 10 varieties. There's like 40 flavors of California balsamic, balsamic vinegar. It's just so easy to change it up. And, and plus sometimes I make my own, but that's really all you need is to is to choose ingredients, choose a grain, choose a bean, choose a grain. There's thousands of combinations. Eat eat the bowl method or the Buddha bowl or whatever they call it, nourish bowls. People have different things. Eat food. You know, you don't always have to have a recipe. Recipes take so long. And that's why it takes me so long to write these books because I gotta because I don't cook with recipes, even my own. I just throw it in the instant pot, push a button, and that's dinner. I own an Instant Pot in a Breville oven because of Chef AJ and I love them. Well, let me say that Dr. Dysinger would love to welcome anybody who wanted to join the practice. He does telemedicine around the United States and he's all about prevention. As a matter of fact, he was the chairman of the, um, the, the preventive medicine department in Loma Linda uh, University for, well, for I don't know how many years, a decade or more, and he's been practicing for 30 years. I also want you to tell people that don't know you that have come on based on our, um, our what we had promoted at Lifestyle Medicine, how they can find you, Chef AJ, and the things that you offer. Sure. Well, I'm here every day, it seems, at least once a day. Today was three. My normal time slot is 11 a.m. Pacific time. And you just go to YouTube. If you click what's called the notification bell, you're supposed to get notified when I go live. But if you sign up to be on my mailing list, I'll put a link right there. That's kind of a good thing to do, especially because with the new book coming out, if you if you buy it when we tell you and email us your Amazon receipt, you're going to get the audible copy and a bunch of bonuses. So there's that. Yeah. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but mostly I'd say YouTube is the place that I am the most because that's where I like to be. That's where I do my videos. That's where a lot of people are watching now. And yeah, so. Okay. And that? let me say that um, her new book, Own Your Health, when it comes out, if it's purchased right away on Amazon, I'll be there AJ that day. If it's purchased right away, it helps her um, get the recognition of being one of their top selling books. And she deserves it. I honestly, I just don't know that many people who put into their work the kind of love and conviction and passion that she does. Um, we, we got to because we're 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 destroying this planet at, at, at unprecedented speed. And you know, at the end of the day, I do it. I do it. I, you know, it's I, yes, I am nice, but I do it for the animals because their their suffering is my suffering, and that's really why I do what I do. Because if I can get people to eat fewer animals and preferably no animals, I can sleep better at night. Thank you for saying that because I feel the same way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, guys, check out Dr. Wayne Dysinger. I'm, I've been posting the link. Just to, just contact the office. What do you got to lose? Because don't you get the, um, they, they, they do a meet and greet if they want, right? Yeah, yeah. We will give a 30-minute um, appointment for free to anybody that um, wants to visit with either Dr. Dysinger or sometimes it's a PA if he's not available, a, a physician's assistant, um, just to talk about what's going on with your health. Uh, a free health assessment is what we call it. So I think that's it. Chef AJ, were there any questions posted or? No, just uh, they like both of our skin. So it's just, uh, but I'm told, I told them it's from the vegetables. Yeah, well, you probably have nothing on yours. I have some things on mine. <laughs>
<laughs> I've got, I, I put some gloss on. Yeah, you look mm-hmm. great. You look gloss right. <laughs> today. Thank it's you great. so much. It's been a, yeah. So when's your next, uh, what's your next thing that you're doing for the lifestyle medicine? What, it, um, do you- every Tuesday and Wednesday, it'll now be Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, starting in October. I do group meetings every second Tuesday of the month. I do a, a longevity recipes of longevity cooking class, all whole food plant-based mainly SOS. Um, And when I turn 70, I'm going to have a book about aging powerfully. Um, After 70 years of fighting food, I found my way. And I'll be sharing the things that made that happen. Do you know when it's coming out? No, because I'm hoping the first draft will be finished in January. I'm only on chapter six. Okay, well, we'll have to get you on the show when it comes out. Martha saying, can we join the group? Yeah, so the way you join Nan's group is to be, um, is to join Dr. Dysinger's practice, right? Right, right. And, and Dr. Dysinger, this, oh, you're going to, are you going to post a link to their contact information, AJ? Were you oh my God, I've, I've probably posted it 20 times during this interview, but absolutely. Thank you. So you can find us. Yep. And I'm, I'm his integrative nutrition health coach, and we have a great staff there. Um, and Dr. Dysinger, it practices what he preaches. He's a healthy, fit man in his 50s who is whole food, plant-based. Um, he lives the life. Wasn't he once a president of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine? Sure was. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He is very, he just came back a while ago from Dubai where he was, he's trying, is it, oh, Qatar where he's trying to help them um, transition their entire medical system to lifestyle medicine. Think about that, Qatar. I'm so excited about the possibilities. And lifestyle medicine, I heard one of your doctors say this, AJ, lifestyle medicine is growing by 50% a year in terms of the numbers of doctors, established MDs in any um, area of specialty Um, becoming certified in lifestyle medicine because they're tired of helping people in their offices who never get well, whereas our people get well. And that's the whole point. Okay. On that note, you go. Oh, I got to say one thing though, because I forgot, this is uh, really interesting. So we, we were both at the, we go to the appointment with Dr. Dyson and Charles goes first and he, he doesn't want me around. And, but for mine, I let him stay. I got no secrets. Right. And so we're talking to him and we're saying about, because we're, we're uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm slender and my husband's even thinner than I am proportionately. And so, you know, uh, we, we said, so Dr. Dysinger, you know, are you know, people saying, are, are we too thin? Are we too thin? He goes, you know, when I never worry about a patient being too thin, if they're eating the way you're eating. So in other words, you know, it's the, that, that's what this food does uh, apparently, but yeah, he, he's great. He's so positive. I, you know, I almost want to be sick just so I can see him again, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and I happen to know because you explained this on some of your podcasts that your lab works are fabulous, are beautiful, that you're so healthy. All of the things people worry about with people who don't eat meat, um, you've shown them after 43 years of this, but mainly these last eight years where you're eating so beautifully that um, we're the healthiest people on the planet. Yeah. It's so funny. I have my lab results open because I would, um, because what people bash me a lot because I, they think I'm going to drop dead because I don't eat nuts, you know, but I eat so many greens that my omega-3 fatty acid levels are stellar. So I get them tested every year. And so he says, your fatty acid ratio is great. I think you should be proud about what you have. And again, he talks about how people are always comparing our blood tests as vegans to the general population, which you can't do, which is why you got to get a lifestyle medicine doctor. And if it's not Dr. Dysinger, I'll provide links to all the other ones I know, and I'll continue to have them on the show so you can find one you can resonate with. Dr. Dysinger can see you anywhere in the United States. And if you need international, I'll have links to one of those. But it doesn't matter who you see to get yourself a lifestyle medicine doctor so you can finally know what it's like to have... (laughs) <laughs> to, just to have your somebody that has your back as, as, as a plant eater, really, because it, it's not that doctors are, are bad or evil. It's just, they don't learn nutrition in medical school. Okay. Thank you. AJ. Okay. Take you're, care, everybody. Hey, come back. Come, Thank come, you. Come, come back tomorrow at 11 AM when we have local chef, Anthony Cruz from Indio doing a wonderful cooking demo. Take care, Nan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.